cuss and stuff. No, you can totally cuss. My channel is like, welcome to cussing. My mom thinks I cuss too. I want my mom to see it too, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so she'll be like, I didn't, I didn't like to swear. I'd be like, yeah, I know that. But everyone else likes to swear. It's a thing. It's true. All right. What up, YouTube? This is my good friend and teacher, Antonio Agnello. That's right. I just got done with a Pilates class. Feeling, feeling the, the pump right now. It feels really good. And that actually, that is, that's why I always come to your classes, man. It's because it's like the strength building side of things. The sensations. Yeah. The feels, the gains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. Exactly. Um, but yeah, the reason I do these interviews and the reason I want to get into them more is because yoga changed my life and I'm just seeking the wisdom of my favorite teachers and trying to get back to the reason why it was so profound for all the people who share it to me, share it sure. with me in a very powerful way. Um, so I guess the first question would be, like, do you have a, a yoga origin story, so to speak, where like the main thing that yeah. got you into this and why it was like, oh shit, this is for me, I need to stay with this and like even go so far as to teach. Yeah, for sure. Um, so it all kind of started like as a child. I was playing uh, tennis from like five years old until the end of college. Yeah, so I played tennis for like 17 years. This is like completely unilateral. And once I started playing high enough level, where like practice, were you know practicing for hours on end, training forever, but then having to like, you know, not do the things to address sort of the imbalances in my body. It caught up to me my sophomore year of college. I couldn't walk past like a crisp pace without experiencing like tremendous knee pain, mm -hmm. and there was no one there to really guide me. So I needed to find something, some sort of like compass to keep my body sort of regulated and at least like competitive. So it was like one to get healthy. I needed something, and I didn't know what it was. And then, once I started to be able to play again, I realized I needed something to not only like balance me out, but I needed to tip the scales in the other direction. So originally, uh, I started taking like my first yoga classes in 2004 in like a racquetball court in my college. Oh, okay. And the realization, and the, 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 what I pulled out of that was like, if I could even be like proficient at yoga, I might be able to live a life after tennis that like doesn't require like surgery or like you know a cane or something. So like I knew I needed something. Yoga did the trick, and then once I was like able to compete again my junior year, I needed and wanted something to keep me not only like in alignment and balance, but I wanted something to like give me a competitive edge. And that's when I started finding Pilates. Mm -hmm. So those two things were sort of once I did them. I just knew right away that, that this was like the ticket for me, that this is like my body responded positively. Yeah. So it was like, you know, an epiphany, really. You know what I mean? That, that was kind of how I got into taking classes. Okay, so did the Pilates and yoga go hand in hand, or? They both work out 100% hand in hand. I mean, if you create tension in one area, sure, you could just stretch it to relieve it. Or you could do it and you address your body in another way and sort of increase the tension on the other side of the body in order to create balance. So it may be like a, a deal where like you're sort of progressing into becoming tighter and tighter. That wasn't exactly the case because you do I do stretch and that was something that was an obvious thing to do to stay loose. But Pilates was the kind of thing that really propelled and sort of like kind of, you know, turned it all up to a level as far as like creating balance in my body and staying balanced. Mm -hmm. For sure. Cool. And then what about going so far as to actually bring it to where you're taking teacher trainings and then like working at some of the best studios in the Boston? The best studio in Boston? Yeah, yeah. Um, initially, oh, sorry. Oh, my gosh. We'll go to I know, it's, we can just, I can just edit around it, I'm a wizard with this shit. Okay. Unless you forgot the question. <laughs> First of all, you will never be me. Second of all, what was the question? Uh, so, what well, taking you to teach? Yeah, like what was it that went from, okay, this is amazing for me, to the point where you're actually taking a teacher training and then like sure. working at like that studio in Boston? So I think at one point, um, this is like years after tennis was over for me. I like stopped playing completely. Okay. And I guess I, I got caught up honestly with like keeping up with the Joneses, like feeling like I needed a, a big job, feeling like I needed to do all those things that everybody else was doing, doing the nine to five, grinding, like not honestly, like not listening to what my heart was telling me. And ultimately like doing sales 
was really soul sucking for me. None of the companies that I worked for like produced a product that did what it said I would do when I sold it. Right. So it just was like a really like you know shallow existence, not really con uh, contributing to my community. Uh, so after like five years of sales, the last company I was working for, just really unorganized, went out of business, and that was almost like the push I needed. So I wouldn't quit because I'm like I have a hard time quitting things. I want to you know like prove that I can do something. You don't want to be a quitter. Don't want to be a quitter. quitter. Exactly, exactly. But sometimes quitting is like the best Free. thing in the world. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Uh, that when I was done with sales, I decided that I wouldn't take another job right away. That I would take like six months and sort of like. At the time, I was also, because I was doing sales and I wasn't happy, I was like drinking a lot. Okay. So I was like getting like chubby. Uh -huh. So I wasn't happy with the way I was looking also. Okay. So I was like, I didn't take six months, get in just the best shape that I can get into. And then hopefully at the end of the six months, like an opportunity will reveal itself. Like I didn't know at the time I wanted to teach yoga or Pilates. There were just things that like I like to do. Like if I knew anything, I knew that I liked these things and it was good for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? So an opportunity came up to do a teacher training uh, at a local gym to teach math. But, and that was like my first, my first like, you know, dipping my toe into teaching for the first time. Uh, little did I know being like a dude in this game was like really rare. Yeah. So I got a lot of traction right away. People were at least open to like meeting me and seeing what I had to offer. And you know, coming from like an athletic background, taking this training like very seriously, uh, these things just were like packaged and, pre and presented in a way that I was able to be successful and like get jobs places. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't until I think two years later I did my training with David Mendetti here at South Boston Yoga yeah. that uh, like broke me down in a way that helped me rebuild oh, yeah. in like the most honest fashion where you know I had done things previously like you know sales or you know doing certain things that you know you, you feel like society tells you you should do then once all that was over it, this was like a rebirth. So right. getting my yoga cert was like a rebirth. Oh, yeah. And then I surely got my uh, apparatus, my Pilates apparatus training, which is like a 650 hour program. Oh, yeah. Very comprehensive. And uh, then it was just like, I knew my world and my ecosystem was like in place. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like everything that I wanted to do, I was able to do because I had the training. You know what I mean? I invested myself into it. But, and I think ultimately like, I knew it worked for me. So I knew if people were dedicated, it could work for them too. Right. So I was in this unique position to share some, some success. And I feel like that is really like contagious and, and you know, people are unsure about the direction they should go in. Talking to someone that's like gone down that path before to like deduce and figure out what's right and what's definitely not right, right. is huge. And just separating those things, like quitting, quitting certain things, quitting lifting, quitting running. Yeah. You know what I mean? All of a sudden gave myself, gave me the, the space to, to open up, like literally emotionally and, and physically in a way that was really like unusual, <laughs> you know? Right, right. So you said something like when you got into the, like you, when you first began teaching, like the fact that you were a dude in this game really was kind of like almost like it helps if people don't think about that. Yeah. But um, that's like a main thing I wanted to ask you is um, like why, don't men do yoga? Like when you like, like consider the ratio, it's yeah. like far. It's like so disproportionate to one. Yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. And that's like a city. If you like, not in the city, it's even worse. I was always like the only guy, in, like up north and like, the North Shore. Um, and so I think you have a lot of value to offer because I feel like a lot of my my guy friends and like hockey players and people who are like into football and basketball. It's like, this is a compliment, you might not take it this way, like, <laughs> but you, like, people look at you and they don't think stereotypical yogi. Right. And when people think stereotypical yogi, they don't think of someone built like you. Sure, sure, sure. And so I guess, like, the first part of that question was the strength side, something that yoga bolstered in you, or was that there before? Or so I would like like lift kind of like a meathead okay. throughout college. Yeah, and I yeah. definitely put on like a lot of weight. Like I probably fluctuate around like 180, 185. Okay. Like now, where yeah. years ago before I started teaching and doing yoga like more exclusively and bodies more exclusively, I was hovering like around 200, okay. which is like significant when you're 58. Right. Like you're stacking it on. You right. know what I mean? Um, I think the reason. All right. So first, 
coming to yoga from like a strength perspective with a body that's like has more tension than say the average person. Yeah. Um, it's really like I think the grass is greener. Anybody who's tighter coming into yoga like would kill sometimes to like touch a toe. Or like, uh, I can't do eagle arms, really. This is my eagle arm. You know what I mean? Right, like, right. I would, it would be really cool if I could like, you know, look good. You know what I mean? I just can't do it, but that's okay. Right. Um, so there's certain things that like, are, I'm limited in, but it doesn't matter. But I feel as though, on um, the flip side, people that are super flexible, like they would kill to have a little bit more strength, a little bit more stability in their body, right. and like have a little bit more awareness in that sense. Sometimes being too open is a problem, but also being too close and too tight, yeah. you don't realize like how much range you, you should have or could have, yeah. right? And I think a lot of guys um, don't stick with yoga or don't dip their toe in yoga because um, it is dominated by women and guys yeah. have like egos and they don't want to not be successful at something. So that was like the first kind of thing that I think is limiting and something I came to terms with and like was honestly like not willing to hang on to. I was willing to like go of the ego of taking yoga even though I couldn't do most of the stuff. I just knew it was right. Um, so there's definitely the ego, but also like if you are a typical dude who's sort of on the tighter side, taking yoga once, twice, three times, like you might not really um, see the gains the same way you might see the gains if you're pumping iron and you're getting strong and you see like yeah I'm getting bigger or I'm doing it now with 35s or 45s or whatever the gains are just not as clear so it takes more time to see them but I think yeah. once you see those gains they're more rewarding than any pump that you could get at the gym or any runner's high that you can get outside or doing whatever like it's just it's a different ball of wax uh, completely because I think it also like affects the emotional side of things really uh, positively, yeah. which is like a whole other side to it. So yeah. it takes like time to feel like those those real benefits. Um, so that's that's like a huge barrier I think people don't want to put in the time. Right, yeah. Because you know, they think like, I've gotten this far. Right. What do I mean? Right, right. You know. And I've had teachers kind of like yourself who started like really into like weightlifting actually who say, I don't know, I'm interested to see if this is congruent with your experience, where now, because of yoga, like they're still working on strength, because yoga is a very strength-building thing, people don't tend to realize, but also, it's a balancing thing, and now that their body is balanced out, they feel more strong, because that strength isn't limited by like, no mobility, it's like the balancing actually almost, they feel more strong. Sure, sure, it's like a, it's like a recalibration almost, where, like you could be independently strong in like your arms yeah. and in your lats and in your side body and your legs and things like that. But like you never use just your arm. And you're right. like, there's no pose that's like arm pose, you know, or like lat pose, you know what I mean? Right. So you're moving everything sort of, you know, fluidly and all at once in a way that's sort of like, this is again, like the gains might happen slower, but if you're in alignment and you start to exercise the body and develop strength in alignment, then your body will sort of propel itself towards that. So when you do other things, you're not gonna be pulled away from alignment. You're sort of gonna be like perpetuating these positive sort of alignment-based sort of like, you know, exercises that uh, ultimately you will build more like full body strength versus the ability to like curl something. What about the ability to like, you know, use your bicep to move your whole body in position and be stable, you know, to isolate things and sort of really have control of the body is much more impressive than like doing one thing with one body part. Right. For sure. So it's like once you start to like feel the alignment, you really start to see like more gains. Just right. because it's like everything is working all at once. You know, there's like no gunk in the system. Because exactly. you can lift and get huge, but like if you're lifting and you're rounding your back every time you do your arms, like this isn't really a good look. You know, no, this isn't like good for your lungs. Like you need like air, you yeah. need upright, you need practice lifting upright with proper form. So that's what like is beautiful about yoga is that it's all about, you know, alignment. Right. Being in alignment, you know. And yeah. then like that's like balance. And like when you feel good in balance, like your mind's gonna be good and balanced. You won't know subconsciously, damn man, I need to stretch more. I'm so stiff. Like every morning it's worse and worse. Before it's so, until it's so bad that you don't even think about undoing it anymore. That ball is like so tight and nice right. and you're just like, dude, there's no way. Yeah, there's no way. So why would you? you know? yeah, 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 exactly. Cool. So we've, we've been touching almost on 
like the other side of yoga. Like what I love about this interview so far is like we probably touched more on the physical side of yoga than mm-hmm. all like 40 videos on my channel. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I always talk about like the philosophical and spiritual side. Yeah, yeah. But um, what people don't know who watch my videos is like the physical side of yoga is a huge thing for me. Like I'm in classes six to seven days a week. And what people also don't realize is that physical side is what leads to all this other stuff. Like people might hear me talking about like Spadhyaya or some like esoteric limb of yoga and they don't realize like all that stuff kind of came like hand in hand with the physical practice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so talking about things like weightlifters having like their whole front body like just came forward. Like that not that's not only a physical thing, that's like an emotional and spiritual thing. Right. Is this person that can like undo his chest is this person also stubborn? Yeah. Is this person also not loving? Yeah. Like, exactly. I wonder, like maybe they're like not in like of attunement with those things yeah. as they could be if they were like had the capacity to like I could stay open like physically and that also is like right. can I also stay open emotionally? Yeah. You know, probably. Exactly. Because I sometimes think that like, people who are doing really crazy things physically, whether it's like weightlifting or even sometimes yoga, it's like, is this person actually practicing yoga or is what they're doing actually serving them? Like, sure. If you consider their health on every single level, from not only the physical but emotional and spiritual, like, is this person's weightlifting obsession actually trying to like, stuff down an emotional problem that they've had since like yeah. childhood, and sometimes you see that coming out yeah. of people. Yeah. Yeah. So the question I, I think I want to end with is, like there's a physical side to strength, but there's also like an emotional and spiritual side of strength, which for me, yoga has actually blown me away mm-hmm. with. And like following you on Instagram and like seeing the, the what you write in your captions and quoting people like Emerson, just reading your, what you write, it's obvious to me, at least on an intuitive level, that's been a big part of your practice, yeah. even if like it's not brought in like super obviously into your classes. Yeah, it's hard to it's hard to like weave those messages in when like uh, the the real way to like embody like what the spirit of yoga, in my opinion, is really just is to is to practice. Like it's almost like conception. Like you can't put an idea in someone's head and then then be obsessed with it. It's like they need to come to this realization themselves right. to realize the benefit of like the practice, you know, and, and the benefits of it emotionally. Like if you're physically strong, does that help you be emotionally strong? Right. It's like, well, uh, sure shit should. You know what I mean? Like if you've been working um, at holding a longer and longer plank, let's say up until like you want to hold it for a minute, you know what I mean? Like if you learn anything about emotional strain and like things that that sort of spins off of like dedication, commitment to yourself or to whatever your idea is, it's like you have to believe that you can build like more strength emotionally and be a so- more solid person if you see that you're able to do it physically. Like those connections and the, that, 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 that relationship is so like direct that, you know what I mean? Like how does one not breathe the other, breathe life into the other? Exactly. You know what I mean? Or if you, if you were like really dedicated to something emotionally and you never really had a physical practice but you wanted to develop one, it's like, I feel like the confidence should be there, you know? Yeah. So whether it's like making you strong, or like you said, like open you up. Just last weekend, I was at Wonderlust, and after eight oh, yeah. classes in two and a half days, we did this exercise where it's uh, standing tree pose, and we all had our arms underneath each other supporting our low backs, and we did this back bend in tree pose, and we lifted our hearts up. Yeah. And like, it was, it was, like, a, it was like the mug root beer commercial back in the day. When I'd go back, Man, did the water work start. I couldn't even <laughs> stop. I couldn't stop crying if I tried. Yeah. And then we did this pose where we like dive forward and had like, it was almost like a sloppier uh, warrior three with a leg up. Yeah. Oh, I'd stop and I could catch my breath again. Yeah. Then we like went back and I was like, <laughs> just like, just falling. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So if anything, like, I feel like my body was so mashed up and like all the tension is honestly gone. Like, was I able to do every pose in the world? No. But was for argument's sake, like, the tension, you know, my central nervous system, was it relaxed? Yeah. Yeah. So relaxed and I was so like on the edge where you always want to take your yoga stretches to the edge where like you're getting the benefits, you're breathing, you know what I mean? The asana, the pranayama, you're yeah. putting those things together that like at the end of it, you know what I mean? Like it was, it was just more, more so clear that like I put myself in a position 
to be like vulnerable and that heart was open yeah. and like I had a physical response and this doesn't happen all the time yeah like usually it's like in a training you might get to this point where you're so exhausted physically that you're feeling the emotional effects almost instantly yeah like once in a while that happens but like it's it's I've, I've experienced it so I know it to be true Absolutely. so it's easier to commit to something that you know is like more tangible you know? right right Sweet man, yeah. I love it. It's exciting. You gotta get excited. <laughs> Does that answer your question? I don't remember. No, absolutely. Dude. Like, and ultimately, I don't care about answering questions. I just care about like exploring, sure. this practice, and sharing yeah. it with everyone, especially people who don't really know the true depth. Um, the great thing about like a teacher like you is you bring it back to the practical. Like, okay, how does all this crazy shit I'm talking about, like the eight limbs and like like spiritual things that are so out there that I know people sometimes watch my videos and like, what, what the fuck is he talking what about? What is happening? Yeah, exactly. So like bringing it back to where all that comes from in like an approachable way, yeah. like I think this is like really exciting because it's actually going to bring people in and getting people who are kind of on the edge of even trying it to like actually go for it and experiencing it for themselves. Yeah. That's like what it's all about. I mean, even if it's for like that, like, temporary, the temporary like relief or sensations that you might get after a class that might fade. Like if you are so tight that then you get, you go to one class, you're like, yeah, I feel good for like half hour, or hour or something like that, until I got home. You're yeah. like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even if it's just for that and that one thing, then like I'll just go for that one hour of like peace that I get after class. Right. Like, that might be the only respite that you get from like the sensation that you feel. So yeah. it could be like this thing that, like you're saying, like yeah. it grows in the mind and it grows in the heart and then yeah. it becomes like, you look back and you're like, oh my God, yeah. how did I live before? You know yeah. what I mean? Like, like there's no, there's no, how did I, what was my compass to help me? Like, what was I doing for myself yeah. to keep myself on track? Because like, there's no one that will ever do that for you. You know what I mean? It's like, if you're not going to do it yourself, like, oh man, I hope your habits are positive and you know, right. your functions are positive because it's very easy to get like sidetracked as time flies yeah. and before you know it like you don't have any more hair and uh you're doing something you never thought you would do you know what i mean right. and you're happy but it's like you just never know where that where that dream is going to lead hell yeah you know yeah you can go from that that one hour after class just on wednesdays to 10 years later crying at wonderless you know what i mean <laughs> to having to having like uh your go-to stretch it's like oh, i just got to get my good cry on you know what i mean yeah. <laughs> it's like you know yeah it's like i think at the end of the day it's like it it, it reduces down to like, like doing the things that serve you yeah you know what i mean it's like I, absolutely that's what it's all about doing the things that serve you that's what my whole channel is about like building a community of people who are like together for that shit. Yeah. like the fact that you could even say like just then like you gotta find that go-to strength and get your cry on. Like I, I want more brotherhoods of guys who can say shit like that. <laughs> you know, it's you know, still how to be a manly thing that yeah. that actually, yeah. and like we can like own the fact that it makes us stronger. You know? Yeah. I mean, just like the, I mean, the release that you get from a good cry. Anyway, it's like, man, that's that's some manly shit. You're willing yeah. to be like that vulnerable. Yeah. You know what I mean? To like let it all out. But most most guys are too masculine to even be able to get on the mat. Or to get on the yeah, mat, yeah. you know what I mean? To put yourself in a position yeah. to be vulnerable. Like the steps need to come at your own pace. So that's right. why it's like also when you do teach and you see some people that are like, you know, struggling or making faces or yeah. you know, body language isn't as positive as you might hope. You know what I mean? You give them a little bit of you know, a little bit of assist, a little bit of support, and yeah. you hope that like at the end of the day, at the end of the class, that they don't remember the parts that were rough. Uh, they remember the parts that were like glorious, you know, but I can tell you, I remember poses early on in my yoga career that like, I remember, it's like, yeah, I could get in it, but I couldn't breathe. Or, yeah. you know what I mean, like one or the other, yeah. you know, and it was just like one of the things that like, the, the progress, the progress is in like looking back is really like what helps kind of propel you forward, you know what I mean? But you gotta get in that prog like that, practice of checking in, looking back, seeing where you come, and then being like, all right, let's go that way now. You know, uh, let's really change this completely because you know, I can't touch my toes anymore, or whatever it might be. Yeah. You know, whatever thing that you want to tell the person wants to like, do for themselves. Yeah. You know, that's kind of how I approach it as well. Oh, yeah. So awesome. I love this, dude. I'm so glad we got to do this, man. Yeah, sure. All right, my boy, Antonio, if you're in the Boston area, South Boston Yoga, do you teach anywhere else? The one and only. South Boston Yoga, he's loyal. Uh, what's, where, your, oh, what's your Instagram? Oh, like, oh Pilates Prince. Pilates, Pilates, Pilates Prince. Prince all day. Check him out. 
Until next time, just in the yogi. Namaste. Fucking wrap. Hell yeah, man.